Hello fellow gardeners, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about the spur flower. Isn't it beautiful? Now the thing is, I've always had it and what I did is I put it in the wrong place. I put it just behind this bush, thinking that it could be like a coleus plant or it liked a shaded light. But then I realized that it wasn't flowering, so I took it where it gets morning sun and suddenly my blooms have happened. So this plant is very, very easy to grow. And the thing about it, it doesn't fuss about anything. The only thing it likes, it's just water thirsty. But when it does flower, look at those lovely flowers and they're speckled inside. So welcome back to my channel. My name is Alice and let's talk about this plant. The thing about this, uh, this spur flower is basically it is sort of a native to South Africa, Madagascar and Sri Lanka. But then there's so many different types of species and also hybrids. Now this one they call the lavender spur because it is all lavender. And the thing about this plant is what I find very beautiful is look at those flowers. Now once you do look at the flower is you get this foliage of green and of course at the back is purple. When the flowers do flower they do raise themselves above the foliage so then you get this beautiful lavender all around. As I mentioned earlier is I did have it in a very different location where it was shaded because I didn't understand the plant but once I did remove it and put it in an area where I get morning sun is suddenly it produced its glory. Now the beautiful thing about this flower is when you look closely it is a two-lip flower and inside it's speckled and it just makes it more interesting. I just love it and it has a sort of silver shimmer if I look closely. I just love this. So the thing about the lavender spur it does like a well-drained soil. It doesn't want water to sit near its root otherwise it will get root rot and stem rot. In terms of light it likes the morning sun as I mentioned I had it sitting there and I didn't get any blooms and it was actually looking quite scraggy but as I moved it onto this side where it gets the morning sun and just the morning sun it picked up and had blooms. Now the thing is is that in order for you to get blooms and to keep the color and the foliage you need to have more light. If you don't have enough light you won't get the blooms and if you don't have enough light the, the leaves start changing and you may lose your purple. In warmer weather, very different, is that we treat it as a perennial, so it does flower. I've had these blooms going for the last three months and they just keep uh, producing and producing. And so I'm using it in a container because I'm able to control it. But again, as I mentioned, in a cold climate, it will be an annual. If you leave it outside, it will die. So basically, you have a decision to bring it inside if it's in a container or what you do is start propagating for the next season. The thing about the, the lavender spur is that it's actually, it starts blooming when the days in Europe do get shorter. So we're looking at fall and spring when the days are much shorter. During this time when it does, uh, does uh, start blooming, do give it uh, just a bit extra water and as it's growing try not to fertilize too much because what happens is that when you do give it fertilizer the fertilizer will go into um, sort of building up the foliage and so what at the expense of the flower so you may in this situation not get enough blooms and as I mentioned before is that it's sunlight and not too much fertilizer. So with a bush like this this lavender spur, if you do have the, 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 uh, the plant is not filling out or it's too leggy, what we know is just go into the plant 
and do your pinching. And once you do do your pinching, what happens, it will get bushier and you will get side branches. We've done this before. Now the other thing is, is in order to get a bit more blooms, as I see this, it's not as full as it was before, I would just go into here and just get cut off the spent flower. Anything I think is spent, I would just remove it. And in this way, we're encouraging more blooms to come. So this is what you would do with this flower. So um, how are we going to multiply this plant? And it's such an easy plant to grow. So there are three methods. We can either do a stem propagation, water propagation where you put it in water, or else you can do the seeds. But today I'm going to do a soil propagation of one that I've already done, and then we'll look for the nice pieces and then also continue doing some propagation because I really want more of this plant. So now here we have, these are stems that I actually did propagate a while back. And actually they've started growing, so it is time to actually uproot it and move them into bigger pots. And remember that as when we do a propagation, we start with a small container and eventually move to a big container and wait for it to get stronger. And once it's stronger and the roots are strong, then we can slowly introduce it into the garden. And that's exactly what we're going to do with that one. So what I'm going to do is quickly wear my gloves and let's open up this uh, plant and see how it's developed through the propagation, soil propagation. So here we go. So I am going to just simply pull one by one out of the container. There we've got rooting and this must be about six weeks old and um, let's look for the other ones again here we have a nice strong rooting look at that success story so what i did this mixture here is just really organic and i did put a bit of perlite because i wanted it to to absorb the moisture and to retain the moisture but with it i've got a success story no, first of all, what we're going to do is bring this because we're going to put them now as we have rooting. We're just going to take, I'll just make a hole here because we're moving it into a bigger container so that in the end the roots can continue to grow and, um, and then once it's strong enough I'll put it in a, another bigger container and Put it back to my what you call it morning sun area so i'm just going to take this and cover it also one has to do is i notice there is is a flower coming up so i just snip it off because we don't want flowers forming so that is one bit and then what I did is that this soil is moist because I don't want my little seedling to get transplant shock so from a moist environment into a moist environment in that way you prevent a transplant shock so we're going to do the last one here and again it is moist a soil as you see and it's all organic mix and it's well draining because as we know is our dear little lavender girl does not want to um, have poor quality soil that doesn't drain. So what I'm going to do is that with this last one I'm going to put it in here and then we go for it. Look at it. This one has really beautiful rooting, looks quite strong. And I'm just going to place her, my little girl, in here. And I think we'll, we'll I think it will work very well, because uh, basically, is I see new shoots coming out. 
all I'll have to do is make sure that the soil remains moist, keep it in indirect sun so we don't have the scorching sun on it and as it grows it's just every time it does produce a flower we just snip it off so all the energy can go into the root formation and making the root stronger. So thank you fellow gardeners, I hope you enjoyed this channel today. Do go and get yourself one of these lavender spurs because look at that colour, it is so dramatic and I just love it and it's so easy to grow, so easy to propagate, look at that and once you have it in in morning sun you get all these blooms so don't forget to follow our channel don't forget to subscribe press that notification button like and share it with your family friends and don't forget we are on instagram dm us all the we're always there to answer you and also send me your comments i always do try to answer it thank you so much and do get yourself one of these beautiful spurs i think they're lovely